Hi guys, welcome to another one of these sort of uh, bumper reviews. I've done this with the Craft range from Bex, and I think I did it also for um, a selection of Pilsens from here in Regensburg. And like those reviews, um, although this is going to be one video, I'm going to be counting it as like three separate reviews in the numerical system over there evidently uh, that I have and uh, god damn do I look rough and look at that look at that nasty I think I got bit by an insect um, when I was asleep but um, yeah it's been a really humid hot day but it's just started to storm which is really really nice but I've got the windows closed so people can't hear me because um, I've, I've been told I've been too loud when I uh, do these sorts of videos so I've got the fan on in the background and that's why I look a little bit worse for work. But when do I actually look my best on YouTube? So uh, apologies about the, the quality um, and I apologise about the length um, that this video could be. But um, yeah, I like doing them in this format. And I thought a thing like this is absolutely perfect for one of these sorts of videos. First of all, let me just cleanse my palette with my water, which I have on hand. No dill pickle jokes here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's so put that away. So then, what are we looking at? Well, as you can tell by the title, we're having a look at a little selection of beers from Tulze Mühlfeld Boy out of Tulze here in Germany. And um, yeah, this is one of those breweries that I've heard quite a lot about, especially with the uh, German beer writers, German beer lovers, and of course people within the actual industry. Um, they, they talk about this a lot here in Bavaria. And I was in Beretta fairly recently, and they had this little free pack. And I think it worked out about, excuse me, three euros per bottle. So, yeah, I don't think that's too bad of a price. Um, and it's something like this is just a great way to uh, sample a brewery that you might have either never heard of or have wanted to try for quite a while. I can't stop looking if they can't tell because one eye is looking that way and the other one is whatever. But that is just so, so noticeable. Uh, even on this lack of quality, that doesn't look any better, does it? Just, uh, who cares? Who cares? So, uh, yeah, three different beers from the same brewery. And the beers involved, if I could say it properly, we've got the Tulsa Hell, Tulsa Pale Ale, and Tulsa Pfizer. So a lager, a pale ale, and a wheat beer. So it showcased some of the lighter craft offerings. I think that this brewery is a fairly traditional brewery as well. But they do, I think every month they have a, a new special uh, craftier uh, beer released and um, yeah big shout out to my Facebook friend Kirsten Ryan um, who brews with these guys and uh, a fine example of even though it should never really be an issue uh, another fine example of a female brewer and um, yeah you'll hear no arguments from me um, anyone can brew it doesn't matter what your race, gender, ethnicity, uh, sexuality, religious, if you're an atheist, it doesn't matter. Um, and unfortunately, there are still people there who have these sorts of grievances with that aspect of ruin. But hey, you know, women were the first brewers, essentially. And uh, it's great to see that there are a hell of a lot of very talented women within the industry. Even though, again, it should not even be an issue. We shouldn't have to discuss this because... Why? You know, 
anyone, everyone can brew. You, do, do you know what I mean? Um, I'm really muddling my words and I'm making it sound terrible right now, but I think you get where I'm coming from. It should not be an issue. And it's great that we celebrate it naturally, but it's a shame that we have to celebrate it. Um, that it's something that should be celebrated when it should be a normal thing. And uh, yeah, anyway, that's uh, my little ramble on that sort of stuff. But a uh, big shout out to Kirsten, who I think I actually bumped into when I was volunteering at the Craft Beer Festival here in Rubensburg last year. And because um, I, I was really not uh, mingling with uh, people within the industry because I was still you know, quite new to it. So, I don't know, I think I probably gave a terrible impression. Um, even though she might not remember that. I could be... Am I remembering it wrong? Was it even... Guess? I don't know. Um, I think we were talking about a review of a Doppelbock that I did, which is uh, surprisingly popular, even though it's one of the most obscure Doppelbocks that I've reviewed. And, uh, yeah, the thing was, because I was volunteering, I was, like, doing my thing, um, I didn't really have time to stop and chat, so I must have seemed like such an ignorant arsehole, so I do apologise about that. But, um, yeah, anyway, the, the brewery in question, Tulsa Mühlfeldbräu. So, three bottles presented nicely in one of these little, I don't know what you'd call this sort of holder thingy. Um, I'm almost, uh, it's almost a shame to pull all of these beers out because it's so nicely presented. But uh, this is a beer review channel and we shall do some beer reviews, god damn it. So, I think I will start off with what could be my least favourite, purely down to the style, and that's the wheat beer. Um, I'm not the biggest fan, as some people know. Even though I think I mention that every time I'm covering a wheat beer or the discussion of a wheat beer comes up. But I'm interested to give it a go. I'm interested to try any beer, whether I'm not that big of a fan of the brewery, whether it's a style that I either don't like or I'm not very familiar with. Um, from macro to micro, I think when you're doing something like this, you kind of should um, review different types of beers and that sort of thing because you know balance furnace and it helps you really appreciate the good beers and then point out the not so good beers um, and yeah I look considerably smaller than I actually am because uh, it's a fairly low down chair but it's comfortable as hell and this table protrudes a little bit so I look so wee I'm a wee little boy oh, <laughs> don't even know what that accent was supposed to be. It was like a mixture of Irish and Scottish. Um, I was talking pesh, essentially. Why am I even talking? I don't know. <laughs> Let's get on with the beers then. So, we'll do them one at a time, naturally. So, where's the, the wheat? So, Tutsa Weisser. And I'll have to get my phone on the go because the writing is a little bit hard to see, hard to read. So that's what the artwork looks like. You've got the logo in the corner for the brewery. Then you've got the center uh, part of that logo. And then behind that is uh, imagery of... Um, not too sure where exactly that is, but I'd imagine it's fairly local to the brewery, but a lovely, lovely image there. And uh, yeah, very simple, very contemporary. I like the look of this, uh, the old uniform, but we all, we shall see them all as we go through. So yeah, a wheat beer then. Uh, clocking in at 5.2%. IBUs are um, 14. Plato is 12. Uh, ingredients are water, wheat and barley malts, hops, and yeast. And the hops are Hercules, Tradition, or Tradition, and Mandarina Bavaria. And the best before date of this is the 14th of August 2017. So we're a little bit past uh, the best by date. But I think with something like a, a wheat beer, it shouldn't really be too much of an issue. 
But uh, yeah, there is an absolutely lovely crown as well. But yeah, I just love how simple yet elegant these beers are in terms of their presentation. <clears throat> so I think for this one, I shall use my BMOF snifter. Uh, because I don't have any 330ml wheat beer glasses, if there ever is such a thing, because people just can put beer in whatever glasses they want to at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, anyway, let's see what we get with this. I'll pour it all in so I can get my big nose in there. There we go. So, beer in the glass then, and that is relatively hazy, not too much. Carbonation is really nice um, and quite fast. That sounds so dumb to say like that, doesn't it? Uh, but yeah, colour is a, sort of a straw-like, very slightly amber, maybe even like a hint of a, a rustic look to it. And the beer poured with about one finger's worth of a somewhat smooth looking, uh, slightly off-white head. But um, yeah, I think there's even like maybe a couple of bits and bobs floating in there as well, which is always nice to see. But yeah, a really nice looking beer by all accounts. So let's see what we get on the aroma then. And that is really bready, as you would expect. It's almost like a, a sourdough. Lovely, gentle, yeasty character. That slight bubblegummy, banana sort of aroma is coming through. You get a very gentle, spicy hop character as well. It's a really nice, laid-back and balanced smelling beer, to be honest. Nothing tremendously exciting, don't get me wrong, but... It's not in your face, and it's just it's just nice, laid back, and ready to go, sort of like me. So let's give it a taste. Prost. It's interesting. First of all, I was getting like a somewhat big kick of hops. But then that died down, and it almost has like a grape-like, winey character, if that makes sense. It's really peppery as well, more along the lines of a fragrant pepper, maybe a white pepper, that sort of thing. Definitely get a bit of clove in there, but almost gives the sensation that it's drying out the palate very slightly. I mean, I say that, it is a quite a dry beer, to be honest. Especially on the finish. When all limp wristed then. It's got very slight savoury tones. Like, um, very slight salad leaf, like a mixed salad leaf sort of flavour. It's very crisp. Body is a little lighter than I was expecting, to be honest. In fact, it's, it's quite a bit lighter than I thought it would be on the body. And now those hops, the, the use of hops is, it's a little bit more aggressive than you would expect from uh, your regular uh, Bavarian brewed wheat beer. But it sort of like adds a nice little twist to what would be a very solid, but quite, you know, blending with the crowd, easy drinking wheat beer. And I think that like, viscous and hop character helps just elevate it a little bit. It's not the most exciting wheat beer that I've ever tried, don't get me wrong, but it's very solidly done and has its own character and personality, which I do genuinely appreciate. So, uh, yeah, 
off to uh, quite an interesting start with that one. Um, I'm not going to rate them one by one, I'm going to do that at the end, which some people might say, I don't do it, just rate them as you race them as you drink them. It's never going to be a catchphrase, but yeah, so cleanse the palate a little bit. Mmm, cardboard in my drink. Didn't even realise I'd put that in there, jeez. Yeah, that's, that's not bad. Good start, good start. So the next one I think I'm going to do is the Heller's beer, which again, very similar, but the actual photograph is slightly different. Um, just lovely images of nature there. And uh, that's the one great thing about a place like Bavaria, and no matter if it's Austria or Germany or anywhere else, it's just it's just blessed with such beautiful scenery. It really, really is. So let's get the light back on, and uh, oh, before I do that, lovely crown once again, different colour to help differentiate it from the other. So let's see what we have in this one then. And, uh, you know, fair play to them for actually putting a proper ingredients list on there. I do appreciate that. So ingredients on this are water, barley malts and hops. The ABV is 4.8%, IBUs are 20, Plato was 20, and the hops are Tradition and Sapphire. And... Do, 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 do. This as a best before date of the 21st of the 9th, 2017. So it's still got a nice amount of shelf life left. But again, don't think it really matters too much. I mean, of course, there is a limit. When you get to that certain point, it just does not taste nice at all. But um, yeah, really nicely in date, I'd say. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Very gassy. Using my uh, other sort of bigger snifter, is that still a snifter glass? I don't really know my glassware. Yet I do beer reviews on YouTube, which I should probably be more aware and respectable of the glassware, but I do love a good stemmed glass. Anyway, let's open this one up then. Throw the bottle cap around. And uh, yeah, Hellas beers are, well, lagers in general, I'm a big fan of, as some of you may know. So, uh, it doesn't seem like this one would be <coughs> aggressively hoppy because it doesn't have like these really juicy American hops in there, which uh, is sometimes a warning sign for me uh, because I like my lagers. It's very traditional, it's very camera uh, of me to say this, even though the camera people would shoot me in the back of my head for saying something like this. Uh, but I like very traditionally brewed lagers of a high quality, and in Germany, I'm surrounded by them. There's four breweries alone in my local vicinity who produce high quality, I'd say world class beer. Um, and then you go just very slightly out of the city, and you've got breweries there, and then a quick train ride away, breweries there, a couple of hours we've got Bamberg. An hour and a half, we've got Nuremberg, and then we've got Munich, and you know, Augsburg, Freising, just so many fantastic uh, breweries within, it's a big stone's throw, but it's still a stone's throw away, I'd say. And uh, when I see craft lagers, I'm always very anxious about them. Don't be wrong, they taste nice, but when you abuse it with hops and then you can't detect that it's a lager, in my eyes, I mean, you know, by the guidelines, it probably is a lager, but for me it just sort of loses that essence. So it'd be interesting to see what they do with this one. But uh, yeah, beer in a glass, and that is, as you'd expect, a Hellas beer to look. Straw-like in appearance, very crisp, clean looking, lovely clarity. Nice gentle carbonation there, going up to that not even half a finger's worth of a white head. Yeah, it definitely looks to style, so let's see what it smells like. 
and that's lovely malty crispness like biscuity a little bit uh white bready as well like bread crust oh, has a slight sweetness like um they're called smacks here in germany uh what are they called uh the honey monster oh what are they called back in england with the honey monster uh oh god how, how can i forget that uh, I've been warped from living here in Germany. Uh, no, I've been warped in the best possible way, trust me. But I've uh, oh got what are they called. Uh, it's probably going to come to me as I'm drinking it and then I'll spit it out and just shout out what I think it is. Um, I've got a phone there, but I'm not going to waste your time by you watching me look at my phone for two minutes. But yeah, it's got that like, sweetness, like sweet sugary cereal almost. A little bit of lemon in there as well. Very slight spicy tones. <clears throat> honey nut. It's like honey nut. I know this isn't so, but like um, honey nut cornflakes. That's the sort of like flavour I was getting. That sort of like. Um... We'll come back to that. No, we won't. Sugar. What are they called? I'm going to actually have a look at this because it's going to be a long video anyway. So why the hell not? So, the honey monster then. Do, 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 do. You can hear me pull if you want to. Honey monster. Do, do, do. Sugar puffs. There we go. Or honey monster puffs, as they're probably called for the American market. Um, sugar puffs, oh yeah. I love sugar puff snacks. Just fantastic stuff. Kaufland's home brand, by the way, if you're in Germany and you're holiday. And you like, um, I forgot what they're called now, sugar puffs, honey puffs, honey monster puffs, but it goes in, just flies out. Uh, then definitely check out Kaufland's interpretation because they're damn good. But uh, yeah, we're not talking about cereal, Pete, we're talking about beer. So uh, let's give it a taste. Prost. Yeah, that's what you want with a Hell's beer. It's crisp, it's clean, it's first quenching, it's refreshing, very simple. It's not a full to the brim with flavour, like most, uh, well, as most Hell's beers are. But what you do get is such a quality drinking experience. And for a style that's so hard to make, it's amazing how nice can be in its seemingly simplistic flavour profile. But again, it's such a hard style to make in general. And this is just a, a very, very solid, tasty Hell's beer. See, craft doesn't always have to mean that you have to abuse it with hops. And uh, yeah, some people are drinking this thing, yeah, it, it's all right. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just Hell's beer though. It's not just Hell's beer. Hellas beers are not just Hellas beers. There's a bit of bias in that opinion, I know. But um, yeah, this is very solid indeed. Bed, beddy, bready, biscuity, crackery. It's not really sweet on the, the palate, maybe a very slight hint of honey. Citrus character just helps lift it a little bit. Very well balanced, easy drinking, simple. Straight to the point, high quality. It's a damn good Hellas. Damn good indeed. It's like grassy, herbaceous, leafy sort of things going on. Yeah. Two out of two so far, guys. Very solid beers. So, the last beer then from this uh, Menage Artois is the Pale Ale. Left this one till last so that the hops don't completely wreck my palate. Excuse me. Speaking of which, need to uh, cleanse the old palate. There we go. But yeah, uh, the hop, I don't want the hoppiness to override 
the flavours of the other two, so that's why I've, I've saved it till last. And I'm going to be using my uh, Regensburg Craft Beer Festival Teku glass for this one. Again, love my stemmed glasses. And uh, again, fantastic looking artwork with another beautiful uh, photograph in the background. Lovely colour schemes as well. Just uh, lovely, lovely photography. Um, I'll have to look into if they've got any information about the photographer because just I really love that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, very nice and simple, elegant again. Uh, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let's see the ingredients for this one then. So, alcohol is uh, 5%, IBUs are 25, Plato is 11. Ingredients are water, barley mould, hops and yeast, and the hops are tradition. Bavarian Cascade and Calista, so a nice hot build. And this goes out of date on the 14th of the 8th, 2017. So again, not the freshest, but it shouldn't hopefully be too much of an issue. <coughs> Excuse me, let me clear my throat. And again, another lovely looking crown. So, let's get this one open then, and see what we get. Okay, I'm going to pour it all in so I can get my big fat nose in there. Uh, beer in a glass then, and that's a lovely sort of like goldeny amberish colour. Uh, it's not too dissimilar from the uh, Heller's beer, but definitely a lot more cloudier. Uh, maybe even more orangey as well. Um, lovely cloud of sedimentation in the centre of the glass. Uh, little, are they little bits of bobs, or are they just uh, bubbles sticking to the side of the glass? Yeah, I don't think they are bits of bobs, but yeah, lovely, um, hazy, cascading um, sediment there. Not overly hazy, though, um, like some beers are nowadays, which nothing wrong with that. Uh, and beer poured with about one finger's worth of a soapy white looking head. So uh, yeah, definitely looks like what you'd expect from a pale ale. So then, let's see what it smells like. Hmm, that's lovely. That's a lovely bouquet. Instantly hit with that, like Rancher's Fruit Pastel, Jelly Tots, Harry Bow, Mau Am, that just like lovely, sweet, jelly burr sort of aroma. And then underneath that, there's a really nice hit of dankness. Uh, quite piney and resiny. And it sort of like borders on that caramelised roasted onions sort of aroma as well. But yeah, those hops are, are really shining through really, really nicely. Was it Cascade? Is it even really working? Looking at that. I uh, don't think I've had too many beers with German Cascade hops, but I do enjoy the Cascade up, and I always say that. Sierra Nevada's Pale Ale is like the masterclass for me and what I've tasted so far of how to use the Cascade Hop. And um, you get that a little bit more toned down than the Sierra Nevada Pale Ale. Again, two completely different um, beers, I'd say. But that's always a reference point in the back of my mind. But yeah, that's lovely. Some slight caramel aromas coming in there as well. Yeah, lovely juicy sweetness. Just a really, really pleasant beer. Definitely the nicest smelling beer so far. So let's see how it tastes then. First. Very citrusy. Very, very citrusy. Big hints of lemon and lime in there. Maybe like the rind of a blood orange as well. Very subtle grapefruit mango flavours. The bitterness. Hardly any bitterness on the back end. 
those hops are really shining through as soon as you're drinking that beer. But that being said, it's not aggressively hot, it's not in your face. Do you get like a slight hint of kiwi in there as well? Dribbled. My only real complaint about this pale ale, body is a little bit too thin for my liking. But it's not too thin, if that makes sense. It's not watery or anything like that. It's just, for my preference, it's just maybe a little bit too thin for me. And that's really the only flaw that I can find with this beer, even if there is a flaw. So easy drinking, so palatable. It's got that real essence of uh, fruit juice as opposed to artificial fruit flavours that you sometimes get with pale ale and IPA. Like there's no sugar added to the juice, it's just freshly squeezed. You get my like, big hit of blood orange juice. Just freshly squeezed and just tucked down straight away. No sourness or tartness. It's it's a little bit thin, but like smooth at the same time. Oh yeah, it's it's a very, very solid pale ale. It really, really is. But not overly exciting or anything like that. I've had much better, don't get me wrong. But I've also had far, far worse. They are so drinkable, so crushable. They all are, to be honest. Yeah. Overall, <coughs> I'm impressed with uh, this selection of beers. I'm not extremely bowled over, but I'm sure when they bring the big guns out, these guys know how to brew a very special beer. Um, judging by the reaction that I've had from people, like I said, uh, within the world of the German brewing industry. <coughs> Excuse me. They were at the festival this year, I think, but unfortunately I didn't have anything from them. Because I had problems. Um, which, uh, if you saw the vlog all that time, you know. Uh, that still burns, by the way, in Munich. But, um, yeah, won't get into that. Uh, but yeah, very, very solid drinking experience. That's for damn sure. Uh, maybe it would have been nice if there was uh, maybe at least one dark beer in this little selection. <clears throat> I'm not too sure if they do other little packs and that sort of thing when it comes to uh, like these presentations. But you know what, if you've got someone, you can buy it for yourself, if you've got someone who's like really into craft beer and stuff and you're in Germany, or if you're living in Germany, especially in Bavaria, and you see it, that's that's like a really nice part of a, a birthday present, Christmas present, that sort of thing. Gives you a nice idea about the brewery. It's got me excited about these guys to uh, look out for more of their beers. Um, and yeah, um, I'm impressed with this. Um, I actually really am. Let me just uh, present this a little bit better. Look at that. I actually did not intend. To start from small, medium, and big um, with this. I mean, there's really actually, when you look at it, not too much difference in terms of the uh, the look of these beers. But uh, yeah, anyway, the beers on the road. So, my least favourite of the three, but let me stress that I don't mean that as it's a bad beer, because again, far from it. But my least favourite is the the wheat beer, just because I'm not the biggest fan of wheat beers, as you know. But it's a nice example of the style, and what I like the most about it, and this is the sort of wheat beer that I like to drink, is when it's it's got little tweaks, little per nuances, and its own personality. It's not just another Hefeweizen, um, which I just find very very bland. Um, as a as a beer, I'm sorry. 
<coughs> to all the Puritans out there and fans of the star, but yeah, we can't all like the same thing. But um, I like it when there's there's something a little bit different that sets it apart and makes it a little bit more palatable and a little bit exciting. So in terms of rating on the the wheat beer, I'm gonna give that one a seven out of ten. Um, and it's at that scale where I don't know if I would I would probably try it again. Um, but I don't know when it comes to sweet beers specifically. I just tend to get a nice big massive habits. Um, I'm sorry, it's very touristy of me. I know, but I just love the style. But um, yeah, as wheat beers go, very solid one indeed. So seven out of ten. So the next beer then is of course the the Hellas beer, one of my favourite styles, if not my favourite style of beer. And uh, yeah, this was, it's what you want with a high quality Hellas beer. Uh, it's not dr dramatically exciting or anything like that, but you don't really yearn for that with a traditional Hellas beer. Um, so some people might score against that factor and think why don't you just buy like your local Hellas beer because change is good doing something different is good and if I was at the brewery and I wanted just a very solid drinking experience then I'd, I'd go for the Hellas lager um, I do that no matter where I go I love to try fresh Hellas beers uh, but of course I'll, I'll look on the menu and see what the, the special is at the time and probably go for that because it's it's a special and you might not be able to drink that again, but yeah, they they know how to brew a damn good Hellas beer. What more can you ask for? So in terms of rating then on that one, I'm going to give that uh, an 8 out of 10. It's an 8 out of 10. It's a very solid Hellas beer indeed. And one that I would definitely drink again. And that leads me to the final beer. Which, of course, I said was my favourite beer. I stand by that. There isn't that much between these two. Don't get me wrong. And it's like this weird paradox where... Would I try this one again? I don't know how regularly I drink this pale ale. Uh, because I always tend to go up to a, an IPA. Um, again, just personal preference. But if I, was, if, I was ten, if I was handed any of these beers at a social gathering or whatever, I would not turn any of them down. You, you've got to be a dick to turn down beer, like, let's just be honest. Uh, but I'd happily drink all three of them. What point was I trying to make that? It's, again, it comes out of my, my mouth, goes in that ear and out that ear. <coughs> uh, what I think I was trying to say is, um, it's not the most terribly exciting pale ale, but it is very solidly crafted. Uh, and the, the thinness works against this one slightly. So, in terms of a rating then, it just about pips the Hellas beer to the po post. And I'm going to give this one a very solid 8.5 out of 10. But yeah, all of them, all three beers, very solid. And I'm really excited to try some of their darker beers, so I'll be on the lookout for those in my local area as soon as I possibly can because, um, yeah, I've had a good taste from the brewery and I want to taste more, god damn it. Um, so if you've tried anything from these guys, as always, let me know your thoughts, opinions down below. <clears throat> it would be great to get some of my uh, either German natives or uh, expats living in Germany to uh, comment on some of these videos. Because I, I do cover a hell of a lot of German beers, and uh, I'm surprised at the fact that I don't have a bigger German audience. I mean, of course, not speaking in German in the reviews does work against you. Um, but uh, yeah, if anybody has any recommendations, thoughts, or suggestions in general about this brewery or other breweries, always welcome. Uh, check out the brewery down below, all the... Uh, uh, the website and the social media links will be included. And uh, yeah, very solid drinking experience. And I hope that it made for an interesting video uh, for you guys. So it's been a long one. So I want to know what you guys were drinking while I was doing this, while you were watching it. 
Um, I, I love hearing about what people are drinking. They, it's like when people buy DVDs or something, or when they do a food haul. I'm actually interested at what people have bought, and um, I like hauls in general, especially when I'm doing the haul. But um, yeah, I hope, that, I hope this uh, intrigued you guys, and I hope it gave you a little bit of an insight into just a very small um, window of the German craft brewing scene. And uh, yeah, thank you guys for watching, thank you for putting up with this long one, and more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another beer review. So from me and my little friend here, thank you all for watching, and I shall hopefully see you later. Prost!